In this video, I want to show an anisotropic Kuohara filter I wrote for Nuke, which allows you to take a photo or render and make it look like it was painted. What's especially awesome about the anisotropic version is that it lets you create brush strokes that follow the direction of the image as opposed to just making little blobs. The anisotropic Kuohara filter comes from some scientific papers written in 2009, 10, and 11 which were implemented in Blender in GLSL code. I converted that into C++ code for use in Nuke's Blink script and packed it into a gizmo, which I'll be demoing in this video, as well as discussing how it can be used in an animation production as one of the tools to get a more stylized painterly look that has become all the rage beginning with Spider-Man Into the Multiverse, with its comic book graphics, but also with other films like Mitchell vs. the Machines with their more illustrative look. Let's come into here and look at the properties. And you can already see it's already doing its awesomeness here, where you know it takes this original image of this cat and makes it look stylized. The size is the size of the brush, the brush size. So if I make it smaller, I'll get finer lines and bigger, get bigger lines. And this is going to make it slower. The bigger you have the size, the slower the calculations are going to be. And another thing to pay attention to is, uh, you see I'm getting kind of these garbly things here. If I have big sizes and I increase the uniformity, which is going to blur the structure tensor, then I can improve that output. Also, Generally, it's good to have, this is a slider for convenience, but you get better results if you put in like uh, whole numbers. And you'll notice that the, the lines are following the directions in the image, which is the anisotropic part of the Kuohara filter. And this is controlled by the eccentricity. It's a uh, slider that goes from 0 to 1, 0 being isotropic, so let me just put it down like that, and you get kind of these blotchy kind of uh, things, and then, then going all the way up to anisotropic. The sharpness is again a 0 to 1 normalized slider that will give you, if you want it, uh, more blurred results as opposed to sharp results. Here's an example from Mitchell's vs. the Machines of their process and what they're doing is they're taking a filter and they are applying it in the render to different objects in the scene and so I want to show uh, a similar application of that in Nuke. And so I have here uh, their original scene, basically just a screen grab of that, and I have a mask that I've made. Now of course if it was a render you'd be using like cryptomats and actually already have the masks and everything, so that's really not the main point here, but what I'm doing is I'm taking the mask and I'm pre molting it to isolate out this area and then I'm putting just this through the Kuohara filter. And then that gives me this result, and then I put that over this. But the advantage of this is it gives me the ability to have different settings for different regions of the image. So I can have uh, one Kuohara filter that's affecting the grass here, and then uh, different ones that are affecting the trees. And so then you get this really granular control through masking. And one thing I wanted to reiterate that I'm doing here, that I had mentioned uh, briefly before, is that I've got really large sizes and therefore I have uh, a really high Gaussian uh, blur put onto this. So this is what it's looking like here but let me show you when I put this back to like the, the regular default value of 5, check out the difference. 
That is weird. It's kind of freaking out here. I think I'm going to quit Nuke and start again. We're back and things are working as expected and was expected is to get this really garbly image which is sort of undesirable. Um, let me mention that apparently it's a good idea to kind of effectively clear the cache out for the blink scripts that are going on here for these uh, Kuhara calculations. But what I want to show you is this with the uniformity or the, the blur at just regular 5 when I have these large values for the size and then putting it back to 20. Give it a second to calculate that. And there you go. So that's the importance of uh, these two size and uniformity kind of working together in tandem. Next I want to show how you can use the map brush size functionality. So the idea is that you have a something like a depth map and you input that into the alpha channel and then use that to control the brush size so that as things get out of focus they actually get more stylized. So what I'm going to do here is I've got the, the depth map here it's calculating out where the pixel values correspond to the scene unit distance. So we can see down here at the bottom, um, around here, when I hover around here, I'm getting like, you know, numbers like, you know, 3,000 and 1,000 and, and so on. And I'm going to take that and I put it into a shuffle node, I grab the depth and I stick the depth into the alpha, and then I use a copy node to copy the alpha from the depth into the alpha of my image and then I put that through my Kuhara filter. Let me put this back onto RGBA and out of the box I'm just getting it on everything but I, so I need to enable the brush map size and now you can see it's it's doing it just on the the back stuff here if we uh, hit a for alpha we can see our alpha map and if we hover over here we see that these values here in the alpha are like at 0.9 so what this is doing is that's because it has normalized alpha mask on and so that's because you don't really want to have these gigantic values for a mask you want to instead of have them be normalized into a range of 0 to 1 and that's what this is doing here. You can of course turn it off and do so manually in the filter at all at, and so on but either way it's going to clamp the output and so we are going to so we have this on here and I can then adjust do a kind of a secondary adjustment of what I want. So let's say I want it to not just be um, full power on the uh, sky, but kind of going a little bit more here. So we can take the lift or the black point and whoops, just sort of adjust this up. Actually, I think I want to go the other direction here. There, that's what I want. And here I'm probably going to want to come into it and uh, increase the blur on it. And I might actually not want to have the uh, eccentricity on so much on this. And so I can get more of kind of a isotropic thing happening here. And you can also, if you want it to be not sharp, but a little bit blurred as well, then you can lower down the sharpness to get kind of soft lines on it. And these uh, these controls here, I mean this is basically just a, a, 
a grade node. So you could, if you were so inclined, also just you know adjust it outside and then just input that directly. So in here, I have normalize alpha mask turned off. So it's just bringing this straight in here. And so what I'm doing is I've got my map here and I do a grade on it. And that's where you sample the white point and the black point. So I've done that and I have it looking like this in here. And then I have a second grade where on the second grade I can then bring that one up. Uh, just now that I've got it normalized down, I can then uh, adjust the black point to kind of bring it forward like that. So, it, so that means that all of this stuff here that I've got is going to be in focus. And then I can adjust the white point where I bring the white point forward so it affects more. And then what you want to do is this value that I'm getting here this is like 13 and so you do have to clamp it so that the value becomes 1 and then you can copy that over and come into here and then here is my uh, resulting Kuahara effect based on uh, depth of field and it, it's just nice to have you know the the settings are are fine if they work for you that's hopefully they do but if they don't you know you can always override it and go manual and have you know complete control over what you're doing an example where i have a render that was done in sort of the normal cg style and i've taken that and applied Kuahara filters to the background and foreground characters. Let me hit play here. And you can see that this works quite nicely in animation as well. The thing that's really important is that you need to have a clean render. Any kind of noise is gonna really become a problem. So you need to, that's, that's the most important thing to be aware of, is that you need to make sure that you have nice clean renders. That's where denoising uh, becomes an important tool in your tool belt with this. So let me show you how I set that up. So I've got here the background render, and normally we would have this running through a bouquet node to give you that kind of look. And what I'm going to do instead is I'll just disable this. And again, I have shuffled the alpha, I mean, rather, rather I've shuffled the depth into the alpha. And then that's being copied into the alpha channel for the background. And then we run it through the Kuahara filter and we get uh, you know this like nice splotchy looking thing painterly looking thing I've done some a little bit of a blur or desharpening I guess you could call it based on the parameters um, to get that to look the way I wanted using again the depth of field as a mask to impact the uh, brush size. And then I've got the spider here. And let me go a little closer on him. And then I've got a Kuahara effect on him. And then I've got a slight amount of uh, tweaking of the, you know, just doing some color corrections on here. And then I have another Kuahara filter stacked on top of that. That's kind of a cool effect that you can do too. So this is um, one Kuahara filter. And you can, if I go a little closer here, 
you can kind of see it. So here it is before, and here it is after, and you're getting kind of these sort of oil painty lines in here. But then when I add in the stacked one, then you can like really see the strong, strong difference that it's making. It's it's much more abstracted, and that's kind of a cool thing to be aware of that you can stack the Kurohara filters and get increased effect. And then here it is, you know, all put together. I'll include a link in the description where you can download the Nuke Gizmo, take it and download it, and then put a line in your menu PY file like I have here. But if you just want to get going right away, you can just go to the gizmo, click on raw, copy it, and paste into nuke, and boom.